Ben and we tour guide for this evening. We're just going to head around the corner to um, the annex of the old courthouse. Since it's been a bar, that many people have actually heard of strange and unusual things going on in that part of, of the old courthouse. Um, Exome Radio came here and recorded a, a programme where several orbs and sounds were heard interestingly in one night and um, had a webcam we could actually see these strange occurrences coming across. These three houses together here, I think it's 26 to 30. Before it was a restaurant, it was actually a bridal shop. And a, a bridal was there one day, getting a dress, and she managed to trip and fall down the stairs and die. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes when she's around, the spirits around, they can smell roses of, of like a, a bridal bouquet of roses. She's actually nicknamed Rose by the people that, that are there now. Now it used to be a convalescence hospital for those returning from the wars, I think World War One or I think World, both of the, the World Wars. And um, <clears throat> there's actually supposed to be a one-armed man, a uh, soldier that regularly shouts at staff. As well, there was a maid here from the time the merits were here that used to live in the attic and she managed to trip and fall to her death like most people seem to do in St. Catharines. But new staff that start here are always advised to never ever look in the mirrors when they go around at night, late at night. Because sometimes apparently they can see this crazy maid who's, who's not very happy that people are now taking over her space. So it's a rather haunted building. As well, there's a, a picture in the boardroom that many people who go there can actually make out the, the images of two spirits, sometimes three. How will I find the job that I want after school? Where can I meet people in my industry that can point me in the right direction? How can I gain more contacts to network in my industry? Who can tell me what the best postgraduate degree is for my career? I know my career path because I was the career expo.
My name is Curtis Maloli, and I am the Vice President of QP4207. We are the union that represents teaching assistants, lab demonstrators, marker graders, and part-time instructors on campus at Brock. Um, and as far as the position of our union goes in relationship to, um, to BUFA, as it stands now, we are entirely um, behind the position of BUFA to negotiate for a fair contract with the administration. We sympathize completely with their um, with their motivations, with their goals, and certainly with their demands, which we see as being, um, you know, very reasonable and uh, by no means uh, extreme in any manner. Our union, actually, just to give you uh, an example, sits in a very similar kind of position um, as BUFA on numerous issues. One of them, sort of the, certainly the most high-profile one, uh, being uh, that of wages. Um, and as an example, our, our, our TAs make eight dollars less per hour than the average wage paid to TAs across Ontario. So we're right at the low rung of the totem pole. And obviously it's important for the future of the university um, that the administration you know, properly takes care of its workers and its professors and its TAs and you know, everyone on campus so that the reputation of the university, the quality of the education, um, and you know, the environment as a whole grows and, and um, you know, becomes better. So we're entirely behind uh, BUFA, and um, we would advise our members, if a strike did happen, not to cross the picket line, to stand in solidarity with BUFA, um, to show their support, and um, you know, to really support BUFA's initiative to get a fair contract with the administration. On Wednesday, October 25th, the Faculty Association held a strike vote and uh, the, the vote uh, was 88% in favor of authorizing the Faculty Association Executive to call a strike. Uh, the vote was, uh, showed overwhelming uh, support on the behalf of uh, faculty and professional librarians uh, to support uh, a strike given the issues that are still outstanding in negotiations. Uh, this does not mean that uh, a strike is imminent, there will not be a strike tomorrow. Uh, the Faculty Associ Association will not be in a legal strike position until mid-November at, at the earliest. However, during this uh, period, the two sides will still be uh, meeting regu regularly to uh, discuss negotiations and hopefully come closer to uh, reaching a negotiated agreement. Uh, on December 3rd, there's one more um, meeting scheduled with the mediator who is very experienced at um, labor negotiations and mediation. And both sides are hoping that by the time that we uh, meet with the mediator, that we'll be able to reach uh, negotiated settlement and with, with the administration and avoid um, <clears throat> the, uh, the problem of uh, having a strike. Um, we understand that students are um, uh, anxious about uh, what might happen and what might happen to their semester. Uh, <clears throat> we regret that students um, have to be uh, inconvenienced and, and are feeling this anxiety. We hope that we can avoid a strike and um, that students will be able to carry on with, with their exams and with their studies.
Hi, my name is Tara. Welcome to Campus Cooking. I'm going to be showing you what you can do with the local product of uh, this airs, uh, with the rotisserie chicken. Um, we're going to have four different dishes. We're going to have your soup, your chicken with rice and vegetables, a chicken salad with peppers and a little mixed green, and you're going to have a sandwich uh, just with a little tomato bruschetta and uh, a little bit of a mixed greens also. Now we're going to move on into your main dish. What I do is, again, I'm going to go back to the, uh, the minute rice. Take your minute rice, put all the stuff you want, seasonings, uh, if you want garlic, a little butter, that's fine. Bring that to a boil with your rice and water, equal parts, and then you put the vegetables on top. What that, that allows is the vegetables will cook right through and through and heat up. And then what I do is, this is a fancy way of doing it, I put your rice here, your vegetables here, and your chicken that you cut off. If you notice, you still have that chicken right there, so you just put that right on top. So then you have the sandwich. Now, I just go and I grab this guy. But generally what you want to do is grab a croissant or a, 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 I'm sorry, a Kaiser bread or sliced bread, whatever you basically you have at home. And since there's a lot of us in this room right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a big sandwich. Okay, so what I'm going to do is slice the bread in half. Right? Now what I also did was, just to give it, you can't just put the chicken right on the sandwich and that's it, right? It's kind of bland, it's rotisserie chicken with bread. So what I do is I like to bring it up a little bit. So what I did is, I took, I'm going to take a little bit of the salad, and I'm going to throw this underneath as a layer. Okay, I'll just move this out of your way. Put that as a layer here. Alright, whatever falls off, falls off, you can put it back later. Alright. And then, I have here a little mix of my version of an infusion of Japanese and Italian, which is a little bit of ginger, a little bit of this vegetable, um, this vegetable seasoning, which honestly, it's, it's, it has a little bit of a lemon taste to it, has a variety of different combinations. I threw that in there, a little bit of onions, tomato, ginger, and salt and pepper. That's it. Tiny bit of oil. Because oil, what it does is it allows you to um, combine this stuff together. It does separate it, but it softens off the acidity. So we have that there. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to bring that right there on top of the sandwich. Then we take our white meat. Now, since it's still on the bone and it's still connected, it's a little slightly different from uh, uh, the dark meat. What I like to do is just take the bone right off. This is a rib cage area, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pull it off as best as I can. Now if it falls apart, if it falls apart, you're not gonna get fired or anything. So pull that off there. Okay. Again, if you wanna save the skin, you're more than welcome to. Then you take your knife, a steak knife I prefer using. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just shave it down. Just as if we were like carving a turkey at home. And get all the bone here. There's that one little guy. You always find one little bone. And what we'll do is we'll just spread the chicken on top. Any which way you like, as much as you like. Now a lot of times people will go to cut the bread, cut their sandwich, or put the top on, and then it'll just fall apart. Great little trick is you leave it open how it is, just like this. And if you have a steak knife, that's fine. If you have a bigger bread knife, that's even better. And what you're going to do is you're going to create the line that you want the sandwich to be. Okay? Then, see it already fell apart. Then, what you do is, you just put your sandwich on there. And there you have your sandwich. Now you can do fancy and you can do a bias cut and show, show the front and whatever. But if it's for you, it's for lunch, you can put this right in the sandwich bag. And there you basically have your your rotisserie chicken in four different ways. This is chicken soup with your uh, chicken broth, frozen vegetables, and minute rice. Then you have here is your rice with chicken vegetables and uh, your basic uh, rotisserie breast. Here you have your rotisserie salad, which is rotisserie chicken, julienne vegetables with a little bit of mixed greens underneath. And then here you have a bruschetta and rotisserie chicken sandwich with mixed green lettuce. When we last saw them, 
our good students were still trying to overcome their major predicaments. Tom is still wrangling with the possibility that he might not proceed with his major. Maybe chemistry isn't the right direction for me. I have to dance. While Greg is happy with his major, Judy is still inquiring about the matter. You know, Judy, you should really pick a major soon. I know, I know, I just... I have so many questions about what I want to do. And poor John has 15 credits, but is yet to be in a declared program. Damn it. Three years into the game, and I still haven't picked a position to play. How will our students resolve their dilemmas? Will Tom make the big switch? Will Judy finally make her decision? And will John act fast enough to graduate? Find out in our next episode of The Young and the Majorless. Why subject your academic life to silly melodrama and ridiculous plot twists? Keep it simple. If you are majorless, just book an appointment to talk with an academic advisor. They'll help you out. This friendly message has been brought to you by Brock TV. Bonfires burning bright, pumpkin faces in the night. I remember. Hanging from pole